Please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. The Cat in the Woods, movie, thoughts. Wow, that ending. Okay, so that was just about the perfect way to end that movie. Um, <laughs> you know, you got the stoner sitting there, lighting up the doobie, hands it over to the girl, and she just takes it and... And they just, you know, two stoners sitting there, it's the end of the world. Eh. You know what? <sighs> Humanity's had its day, man. Let's let some other people, let's let something else try to rule. And giant god hand comes up out of the ground and <laughs> grabs the audience, basically, you know, comes out at the audience. And title card, credits. That was just about perfect. I loved the entire, I guess, second half, or at least final third, whatever, from when they enter the elevator and everything from then on, I mean, especially when they, I mean, it just so happens that they end up in the room where the, you know, button is for releasing all the, you know, but you just got the guys with guns shooting at them, you know, I love how none of, not one of them considers, hey, they've got like one gun, what if we just run at them instead of just shooting and gradually moving towards them, whatever, you know, and all the elevator, and you just have that one guy, oh, crap, and you just hear the pling, and all the elevator doors open, and you just see it from one angle, and monsters come out and grab them from all sides, and like, you know, several of the monsters are like, oh, right, like that, from that thing, you know, like, all of them are like, you know, creatures that, <laughs> at the point where the unicorn came out, it, a guy near me actually commented, aren't they supposed to be like, good guys, or, you know, whatever. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun, you know, and you've got the clown, you've got the, were they the ones from, you had the ones in the, the masks, weren't they the ones from that movie with, what's her name, the uninvited maybe, is that what it's called? No, I don't think that's what it's called, but anyway, it's that movie with the chick from, yeah, don't remember her name, but yeah, where they're like terrorizing her from outside and it's like a couple of people. Anyway, yeah, you, I gotta talk some about the meta stuff in this. I really love how the puppeteers, let's just go with that, become proxy, proxies for both the the crew of the horror film you know the they they are guiding the events so that these archetypes die in the correct order although i'm not sure how exactly they made sure that you know that kurt died at the exact right time and of, I, I mean the way it sounds later and by the way if they really needed like you know a slot to be one of them. Why were the Japanese ones going after nine-year-old girls? You know what? I don't want to know. Forget I asked. Anyway, you know, they, they become proxies of both the, the, the crew of the horror film, making sure that everything happens the way it's supposed to by genre conventions. You know, that's why all these horror movies are exactly alike. That's their answer anyway. And why do people need to die? Because there are these ancient gods that need, you know, placating. And I liked how you could tell that there's like a national, uh, international operation going on. You know, you had Sweden, you had Japan, all these different, yeah, that was really cool. And uh, it just also, it was, it was hilarious how the, I mean, <laughs> 
I don't have a problem with, with Asians or Asian horror. I mean, I'm not a fan of Asian horror, but whatever. It, just, it was perfect that, you know, oh, the evil has been defeated. It's now in this happy frog. That was, that was perfect. And they're like, you know, ah, yelling at the screen that that's not how it's supposed to go. You know, anyway. They become proxies of both the crew of the horror film and the audience of the horror film. You know, they're sitting there, they're taking bets. Who's gonna, you know, what's it gonna be that kills them? And, like... More to the point, they are, you know, hoping that Julie gets naked and, you know, trying to, you know, all, all this stuff. And, yeah, it's, that just really worked, I thought. that, And I think it's also somewhat indicative of the, the hatred of modern horror films, of both Drew Goddard and ooh, Joss Whedon, that basically every character dies is one thing, you know, and the people in the control room all die as well, you know, and they die by the hands of these monsters that they've been using, you know. And I really like how they just built that whole thing up, by the way, with the elevators. You know, first they go into the elevator, and then, you know, you see through the, you know, oh, there's a monster, oh, phew. He's still moving in. Excuse me. And then, oh, another monster. Hey, there's a monster behind us as well. Excuse me. And then, you know, they realize with the, you know, you got the Hellraiser, obviously. That That's exactly what I thought the moment I saw the, you know, the round thing. And he started, even before he started solving it, I was like, you know, lament configuration, obviously, you know. And the whole thing. And, and I love that, that that one puppeteer guy got killed by a merman. That was perfect. Again, that just, yeah. But then, and the, the camera pulls out and you just see all these monsters, you know. And then again, a little later, all the elevator doors open and all these guys get killed by the... By the way, the voice of the... You know, that the told them, you, you know, he has to die, you know, just... Yeah, we're, we're sorry, but this is the way it has to be. By the way, if they needed her to... Well, if they needed him to die before her, why were they just shooting at them with the the SWAT team guys? Anyway. Yes, so you have the... Lost my train of thought. Anyway, I will pursue another one. That the... I, I love how almost everything, you know, like, like lines you don't think will really mean anything. Lines that are just kind of, yeah, you think, oh, you know, this, this again. And it just kind of, it actually leads to something. You know, you got the stoner, the first thing the stoner said, well, one of the first things, one of the first lines in this movie, one of the first things the stoner even says, you, just as soon as he's been established as the stoner character, he's like, one day you will see it my way. And by the end of the film, Dana does. You know, she's even sitting there smoking a doobie with him. And, you know, I quite like how the, that his, you know, the bong coffee, you know, thermos thing, you know, turned out to be a weapon as well. And I guess that blood that splurted out was the zombies and not his. Because uh, that makes sense. That could be. And the, I, I quite like the explanations for how, you know, they're like, oh, you know, Kurt's being, you know, such a jock now, and she, you know, she's being such a slut because, you know, she dyed her hair, and there was something in there, the, the chemicals are, you know, making her stupider and blonder, and, you know, the whole thing, and, yeah, you know, all that stuff I just thought, you know, quite worked. But, but yeah, you know, you've got lines like that, like him saying, you know, some, one day you will see it my way. And then you've got, you know, that line about, you know, you're not coming back here. You know, that that's going to be more difficult. And then, you know, he, you know, he calls and he's like, this, you know, this is good for the ancient gods, you know. And you're just thinking, oh, this guy's insane, you know, where did they find this guy? And then later... 
yeah, the ancient gods, yeah, you know, he, he and it, yeah, it's just, and I love the whole speakerphone thing, too, as well, that was extremely funny, I, I gotta say, that I love that, every single moment of it, I don't know, this is embarrassing, I don't know who's in the room, anyway, you know, all these lines, and, and the thing about, you know, why hasn't the tunnel collapsed? You know, and he gets down there, and they're like, we didn't get the signal! And, you know, he connects it, and the tunnel collapses just in time, you know. And so they have to back up. And then, you know, he's, you know, busting their nose about, you know, oh, it's just... You know, it's okay. You just, you messed up, but I forgive you. Seriously, we didn't mess up, you know, it, it, the power, the, the signal didn't come through, from, you know, somewhere from upstairs, the, the power was redirected, and the phone rings, and I love how that's the first time you see that phone, you know, we never noticed it, I mean, it might have been in the room the entire time, but we never noticed it before, and it's just, everybody shuts up, and they're just like, you know, they're like, we gotta shut off the music, and just, you know, you know that that's serious, and then, you know, when you see... And, and they're talking about, what, which one of them? And then you see Marty back alive, and, you know, he explains, oh, I just, you know, found this, you know, power source for the, the elevator, and I made it work. And so that's, you know, that's how the tunnel didn't collapse. And he's been spending all that time figuring out the tunnel wire, the elevator wiring, and chopping up that zombie. And again, you know, Evil Dead reference. And I and I like how the the sort of the attitude towards when when Dana is apparently about to be killed, you know, by the one of the you know redneck torture zombies, and they're like. I mean, one thing is that they're partying, but they're not even paying attention. You know, they're like, you know, and that's kind of how, you know, by the end of a horror film, you're like, oh, okay, it's, you know, getting towards the end. Well, the fun part is probably over. You should just, you know, it's just kind of, you know, I don't know. It's, you can argue if they're, if they're right, but what I think Drew and Joss are, you know, trying to say is you're not invested in the story in modern horror. You just want to see, you know, people die, and once it's, you know, up to the last victim or whatever, one, you know, once it reaches the end, and, and I like that touch as well about how, you know, maybe she'll die, maybe she won't, you know, maybe the virgin will die, maybe she won't, because sometimes she lives in the horror films, but, you know, just that kind of, well, that part is maybe more, like, slasher convention, but overall, I'd say they touch upon other, you know, again, as long as we're talking mainstream horror, maybe primarily American. But, yeah, you know, they're saying, you know, you don't really care about the you know, thing. And it's even worse with the puppeteers, because these are actual people. You know, it's not just the fictional characters. I suppose that more or less covers it. Yeah, I I really enjoyed the film, and, you know, yeah, I think that's it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.